Hi, I'm Lisa Strato with Info for Disasters, and I'm a core team member with Standby Task Force. Um, we heard a lot today about how crisis mapping is done and what tools that we use. We did not hear anything today, nor do we very often hear, how do we feel, we being the people that do this work, how do we feel emotionally? We have our eyes into our computers looking at different areas of our world to see different crises. And a digital responder can travel many countries, many disasters, many crises in a matter of minutes. The boots on the ground responder is confined to that one area. And so a digital responder does see a lot more. With Twitter, we have live news streams. We can read about how people are feeling all over the country, or the world, I'm sorry. We have Facebook, uh, all social media avenues. We can get all the information in real time to see where people are and how they're feeling. Then we come to the mapping projects. And we sit and we map, and we're helping. We're spending time helping people all over the world doing what we're passionate about. And we have it made because we work for ourselves. We don't have to do a time clock. We can work from our homes. So of course, we can put down our computers or our smartphones at any time we choose. But we don't put them down. We are driven to continue helping people because we feel an urgency that there are so many people that need our help. And we work, and we work. And the pictures you see streaming are just some of the ones that we can see in what we're doing. But we have to think, what do these pictures and images do to us emotionally? Not only the time that's spent behind the computer, but the things that we're seeing, the stories that we're reading, they do have consequences. We burn out. We get depressed. Some even suffer PTSD. But nobody wants to talk about it because any type of mental issue is still taboo in conversation. It's still looked at as a sign of weakness. But it's not. We're human. We are some of the most compassionate people on the earth because of what we do or we wouldn't be here. But there comes a time when you just can't do anymore. There came a time for myself after high end, after looking at over 3,000 pictures on the clickers, and I just, I got up one morning and looked at my computer, and I couldn't, I couldn't, I could not open my computer. So first to recognize the signs that you can burn out, you can be depressed, but it's okay, you're not the only one. There's other people, but we have to learn to recognize it, to reach out to each other, to see how other people may be feeling. Because with your larger boots on the ground organizations, you have set up, you have safety nets, you have your debriefing sessions, you have your counselors, should you need or want one. The digital volunteer doesn't have that. We don't have any of those safety nets. And we need to try to implement some and think of a way to be able to catch these people, because otherwise we're going to have secondary crises of a whole other group of people suffering from trauma and PTSD. Our families get left out because we are so focused on the work we're doing, on the computer, on the smartphone. And yes, we are helping. We're helping everyone else, but we're not helping ourselves. We're not taking care of ourselves. We get isolated. We feel alone. And in this work, there is no age limit. Anybody can pick up a phone or a computer and help. And again, they will see the images that you've just seen. We have to remember to stop, take time for ourselves, share our stories. The biggest thing is share it, because I guarantee you, as soon as you tell somebody how you have felt, how you have been affected, they're going to say, me too. Thank you.